Joining us right now is former White House Chief of Staff under President Bill Clinton. Mac McClarty is with us. Mac, good to see you, sir. Thanks so much for joining us. Maria, my pleasure. What is your take on this? You've seen this before, obviously, in the Clinton White House when you've got so much division. How do you see it? Well, I think I've also seen it before when President Clinton put forward uh, his economic and deficit reduction plan and the vote was ever so tight in that first year. And had we not been able to pass that a bill in the first year, given the focus on the economy, it would have been a very difficult uh, uh, road ahead. So I think President Trump's facing the same thing. We've got the wizard of the Senate, Mitch McConnell, trying to go through this narrow pass. I think, um, I think it's tight, clearly. The timeline's tight. But I thought the four senators left a little room there for their art of the deal. We'll see if uh, President Trump and and uh, Mitch McConnell can make that deal in a, in a very tight time frame. Meanwhile, Mac, we want to switch gears, talk to you about the Democratic Party. After yep. five special election losses, some liberal lawmakers are reportedly considering ousting House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi. Now, President Donald Trump weighed in on the potential shakeup during an interview on Fox and Friends. Listen to how the president addressed this. I hope she doesn't step down. I think that it would be a very, very sad day for Republicans if she steps down. I'd be very, very disappointed if she did. I'd like to keep her right where she is because our record is extraordinary against her. But we'll see what happens. There has been a lot of talk about her stepping down. We'll have to see what happens. What do you think, Mac? Are Democrats in disarray at this point? Well, I don't think they're going to use President Trump as a Democratic advisor uh, on their political uh, fortune. Well, he says leave her in place. Yeah, I know that. That's my point, Maria. Uh, <laughs> uh, so. Uh, uh, I, I think this. First of all, uh, I like and respect Nancy Pelosi. She's a friend. Uh, secondly, I think it's easy to overreact to these uh, elections and, and not to really put a positive spin on it, but just very straightforwardly, Democrats actually ran stronger than, than many people anticipated in, in, in Republican districts. So I think we at least need to put some perspective here. Having I, said that, yeah. having, having said that, uh, Leader Pelosi has been a consequential figure. She has been a master of the House in terms of legislation. She has great friends and support. But there's no doubt that I am for a, a, a centrist, vital center, a big tent. And there's going to be discussion about this, and I think that's a good thing. Listen, one of the things that I'm really impressed with, and I'm not going to say I'm impressed with Nancy Pelosi herself, but her discipline and message is unbelievable. What she says, people repeat. And she has reframed this health care bill now as giving money to the wealthy and talking about it as if they're taking away care from the American people. And then it trickles all the way down, so it seems like we might be talking about this, but she still seems to be a figurehead, a leader, and that seems to trickle down. Well, I think you make a, a good point. It, it, it reflects what I just, uh, the points I tried to just note. And going back to health care, when Maria asked, asked me about it earlier, I, I think this is a very difficult moment. I mean, look, health care is a very important issue. I'm very... Uh, regretful to see it on a partisan basis if it does move forward. Uh, I think Obamacare has some serious issues to address, but you're right. The uh, public opinion polls right now do not reflect favorably on the Republican bill, and Leader Pelosi is pointing that out and making that case, I think making it very thoughtfully and eloquently and persuasively. Well, uh, you know, th this is what I hear about this from Speaker Pelosi. It's a tax. It's a break for the wealthy. She can't define what that break is. They talk about Medicaid expansion. They talk about the blood. They don't talk about the block grant programs in the Senate discussion draft. The fact is they're actually selling a narrative over the reality. And as far as her leadership, she's a big money raiser for the Democrats. That's one of the reasons she's not going anywhere. But why not deal with a debate on the what's in the bill versus not reading it and just attacking it four minutes after it comes out? Well, we need to have a serious debate about a serious issue on health care, and it's certainly not an easy subject, as the President once suggested. Quite the contrary. Uh, the American people are concerned about this, and for good reason. It's a big piece of our economy, as we all know. So I think there will be a, a, a real debate, but you, you have to also 
to but be fair. But are the Democrats going to gonna come to the table on a debate or they're going to attack? The fact well, is Anthem left two other states, Wisconsin yep. and Indiana. They yep. left 20 counties in Ohio with less choices. Those right. are the latest. And there are requests going forward in four to five states for raises from 16 to 32 percent in health care premiums looking ahead to 2018. So we're talking about a re remarkable <laughs> change and Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi are not telling the truth about what's even in the discussion draft. Do you agree well, with that, Max? Do you agree I, I, that, I, yeah? I, I don't fully, and I, I'd like to r respond very quickly. Please. First of all, I did acknowledge that the Affordable Health Care Act had some serious issues earlier in my comments, so I agree with you, the points you raised there. But secondly, the way the Republicans have approached health care reform has not given the Democrats an opportunity to participate in that debate. Now, you can make the case wouldn't have made any difference. But that, that's, that's not the right way to legislate on this critical issue, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, what, what about just this, you know, obstructionism going on? I, mm -hmm. I mean, do you think that the voters will uh, hold them to account that in 2018, when you've got the elections coming, that voters will say, look, you're the party of no, you're the party that stopped President mm -hmm. Trump's agenda from getting executed, or do you think people forget? No, I think the American people are ready for the congressmen that, uh, and, and congresswomen that they elected to do their job and make their lives better. Right. Uh, so I, I think the Democrats need to look where they can reach common ground with President Trump, but it's incumbent, Maria, on the president and the executive branch of government to reach out and try to make that happen as yeah, well. Yeah, no, you're right. Well, but the thing is, is with the obstructionism coming out of lawmakers on the left, that is making it okay for Hollywood to just say whatever they want about <laughs> Donald Trump. No, seriously. I mean, outrage is brewing well, this serious. morning. No, it, it's a serious oh, point. It's a